All right, next up, I'm pleased to welcome Caitlin Brugenthies and Josie Zimmel from Communication Sciences and Disorders. Most welcome. Imagine your mom suddenly has a stroke and all of a sudden has difficulty forming words and sentences to talk to you. You would want the professionals who are working with her to provide her with the best and most up-to-date care possible to help her speak once again. This is evidence-based practice. My name is Josie Zimmel. And I'm Caitlin Brugenthies. And we are studying to be a speech therapist and audiologist. In this situation, speech therapists would be the ones working with your mom to help her improve her ability to speak. They also work with people with a variety of other communication impairments, including people who stutter, children with language delays, those with hearing loss, and people who have suffered a traumatic brain injury. According to the American Speech Language Hearing Association, over 40 million Americans have communication impairments today. The goal of our study is to better the services for this large population of people by finding ways to keep speech therapists up to date on new therapies and technologies to better their practice. In our ever-growing field, it is necessary that speech therapists constantly consult research to update their practice. This is evidence-based practice. Evidence-based practice is made up of three pillars, work experience, consulting research, and considering the patient's values. The use of all three of these pillars in combination is necessary to provide etiquette care for clients. Our study looks specifically at the research component of evidence-based practice. This is the component that allows speech therapists to access peer-reviewed articles and stay up to date on the newest therapies. Previous research has shown that in our profession and other healthcare professions, Clinicians are not accessing the research component of evidence-based practice due to a variety of barriers. Without the use of research, speech therapists are not staying up to date on the newest discoveries being found in our field. Therapies and technology are constantly altered and perfected, and staying up to date on this information will increase the successful outcomes for the people that we serve. Limited research has been conducted on the use of evidence-based practice within our field since 2005. This is the same year that new standards were implemented requiring an emphasis in both undergraduate and graduate programs for research. To determine if the implementation of research in our field has changed since 2005, we developed and distributed a th survey to practicing speech therapists to determine their current use of research in our, their practice. Our survey focused on what helps and what hinders speech therapists in accessing and implementing research-based practice as well as what undergraduate and graduate programs can do better to help prepare future speech therapists for the use of research in their practice. Preliminary results suggest that the access and implementation of research-based practice varies depending upon work environment, access to resources, and allotted time to review research articles. The information gained from our survey will help our field better learn to support speech therapists in the access and implementation of research into their practice, thus providing their clients with the best and most up-to-date care to facilitate their communication and improve their overall quality of life. You said you sent out a survey to currently practicing doctors. Yes. What was your sample set? Was it regional, local, or was it? Yeah, so stuff? we had an email list of, we have a, a graduate program here on campus, and so we sent it out to previous supervisors and graduate students that, from our program, and then we also posted it on to Facebook pages targeted specifically for speech therapists, like SLPs at large, and we got 205 responses. And then uh, a follow-up to that, you, you mentioned a couple times that there's barriers to accessing the research. Mm -hmm. What was, you know, the most common, you know, one or two answers that you got back? Yeah, that? time was a huge barrier, that they didn't have professional time to look into the research, as well as just, like, um, unsupportive work environment. So if they wanted mm -hmm. high productivity, then again, that time was coming up. They didn't have time to use the research. Sure, but it's, it's there, but you have patients to meet. Right, of, yeah. right, right. So, for second place in Social Sciences and Humanities, I'd like to welcome back Caitlin Brugenthies and Josie Zimmel from Communication Sciences and Disorders. You get in the middle. You get in the middle. Yeah, you get in the middle. And we're 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 backing you. Perfect. Looks good. Nice smile. One, two, three, good. Good and good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you.